Welcome to the CyberClean Systems Lab in Richmond, Virginia. I'm Richard Ward, Chief Technology Officer. Here at CyberClean, we believe optimization is the most important key to your success with robots. So, you've evaluated a robot, you've deployed it, now you can sit back, relax, the robot's going to do the work hardly. The work has just begun. A company came to us recently and wanted us to take a slew of robots off their hands, saying the robot technology didn't work. Worse, we had a company say that they abandoned their robot project, that there was too much labor involved. In both these cases, it wasn't the robot and it was not the technology, I promise you. They were either oversold or overpromised. They certainly didn't look at our evaluation and deployment videos. There's a large gap between robot manufacturers and end users who have a demand for their product. There's a bridge of information that needs to happen, but it's not enough to evaluate and deploy. As we've said before, this is not a one and done operation. So what's involved with optimization? Let's get to it. Number one, ongoing training. Remember how we said before that the person being trained is key. In the cleaning industry, there's a 400% turnover rate. So it's likely you're going to be training a robot position four times a year, even if it's one time a year. Having an ongoing training program for your robot operators is key. We learned recently about a company who has decided to dedicate an entire department to robot deployment. Now that's what I call all in. I promise you that ongoing training is critical to your success. Technology is moving at light speed, so you want to make sure that you're not training on old technology and you take advantage of new technology. These robots are getting better and better and better. All right, number two, map or productivity enhancements. We learned recently about a company that had to redo their entire installation because somebody unauthorized had come through and changed all the maps. Remember how I said, the setup of the maps is really nice, but sometimes it's not so nice? That's because you need to control who has authorization to change your maps. Make sure there's a policy in place for who has authorization to change those maps. Better yet, how about enhancing those maps? So let me give you an example. Recently, CyberClean took a customer who had a 20,000 square foot production rate in autonomous cleaning all the way to 1.2 million square feet. Why does that matter? We like to say at CyberClean, the more a robot is used, the more labor can be repurposed to more productive tasks. So if a robot sitting in a closet is doing you no good, there's no labor being displaced. Here's an example. As you can see from this first number, this is one half of the manufactured production rate. Look at the numerical value of labor displacement. What if we achieve exactly what the manufacturer says the robot will do? Here's what that number looks like. But what if we could do more than what the manufacturer suggest a robot can do. That number is significant. Okay, number three, a little sensitive, preventative maintenance. Look in any janitorial closet in the country and you're going to find equipment that is not so taken care of. Hey, I was in the business two decades. We fought this problem over and over and over again. So you're going to make an investment in a robot. Who's going to take care of it? I can't tell you the amount of times we've been on service calls and it's been a simple preventative maintenance issue. So be sure you think about who's going to take care of this investment you've made. Make sure you either hire someone in-house or contract it out, but be sure you protect that investment. It might even be good to have that robot in its own special place to make sure it's being taken care of. Number four, and one of my favorite, reporting. Hey, I'm a data guy. My wife likes to joke about, hey, he's a spreadsheet guy. The robots today have onboard reporting it's amazing. For the first time in the cleaning industry, we can actually validate the work we've done. Today's robots will show you where it ran, how long it took, what time of day it was, if it had any errors, if you had to assist, and a lot of them generate maps. So imagine how good it would feel to send an email when someone complains about an area not being done, and you can validate you have a map that the area was done. These robots report so much more than just validation. Technicians can get in and see how they ran, why they didn't run, how to fix it, what systems work properly, what doesn't. There's so much more data. Creative companies like SRT 
and also in orbit are leading in this area. Watch for future consolidation of this data in user-friendly reports. Number five, help. A little help, please. Help, my robot's stuck. It saw a ghost. It doesn't work. I don't know what to do. Something's happening with the robot. I don't know what it is. Remember how we said we're introducing a high technology solution into a low tech industry? That takes communication. Sometimes a simple answer to a question means the difference between success and not so good success. Open up the lines of communications. Set up a help desk or let us help you set up a help desk. Did I say help that many times? All right, number six, cobot labor. My brother Buck likes to call this position a cyber tech. Forty years ago, when he had this vision, he wanted to elevate the cleaning person. How you view these robot operators is important. You could change your cleaning person into a robot operator, a robot deployer, a robot technician, a robot service person. I want to be a cyber tech. No matter what it is, the goal should be to elevate the cleaning person to a more productive task. How you plan for your career paths is critical to your overall success with robots. So this is an exciting time. Technology is changing. Technology is here to stay. It's not going away. So your decision is it to follow or to lead. As the car industry came along, the old buggy makers which said, no, we don't want to have anything to do with that. Well, the founder of GM decided to make a car company instead of buggies. The rest is history. So will you be a buggy maker? or will you be a car manufacturer? Will you lead or will you follow? Even though it's about robots, it's still about people. So the key to your optimization is still people. So thank you for watching this video. We're excited about this future together with you. Like us, subscribe, send us an email, chat with us. We're looking forward to talking to you. Thanks for watching and looking forward to the next video. By the way, before you go, we have some more videos coming behind this. We're going to spotlight these fantastic machines. You're going to get a chance to meet some of our technicians, some of the best in the world, young guys, older guys, been around a long time. I'm excited about introducing you to those people.